All right. Well, welcome everyone today. We're so glad to have you all here and um, engaging in this important conversation. Um, as we get started, I would like to uh, read Santa Fe Community College's land acknowledgement. Santa Fe Community College acknowledges that the lands beneath the college are the unceded sovereign lands of the Pueblo nations of Tasuke, Nambe, Powake, San Ildefonso, Okeowinge, Cochiti, Keowa, San Felipe, Santa Ana, Zia, and Jemez, and that New Mexico's indigenous peoples, their governance, cultures, languages, and religions have been systematically attacked over centuries of settler colonial erasure. SFCC recognizes and respects indigenous peoples as the original and current stewards of the land where we learn, work, and grow. SFCC commits to recognize the collective histories and to engage in restorative actions that demonstrate inclusive support for Indigenous community members while practicing responsible stewardship of the land. By honoring and listening to Indigenous voices, SFCC will embody anti-racism through ongoing restorative action for social justice. Again, thank you all for coming today. Um, I want to describe a little bit about how things are going to run. Uh, we're going to hear a presentation from Sarah Hood. She encourages you to chat with each other in the chat box as she's presenting. If you have questions, you can post them there. I'll be tracking them and um, we'll be asking them of Sarah uh, at the end of the presentation. Sarah is saving about 25 minutes at the end of the presentation for us to have a discussion. So there will be a lot of time at the end to ask questions and engage in some talking points. We'll be recording the first part of this event, but we'll turn off the recording during the discussion part so you can speak freely and ask questions. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Sarah Hood, who will be leading us in our discussion. Sarah is the reference and instruction librarian here at Santa Fe Community College. She's worked here for almost six years. And before coming to New Mexico, she was head of research and instruction at Columbia College in South Carolina. Knowing Sarah personally, issues in librarianship, education, equity, and teaching are her passion. And I'm so excited that she's taken on ChatGPT as her current interest and passion. Her skills in education in this area are and will continue to benefit the SFCC community. So please help me welcome Sarah Hood. Hello, hello. Um, thank you all again uh, for coming today to talk about this very important topic. I know many of you have carved out time out of your very busy schedules to be here. Um, some of you might even be eating lunch right now, and that's absolutely okay. Feel free to do that. I am just happy that we're all here. Um, so before I get started in earnest, um, I'd love to take just kind of a quick poll here. I am super curious about how you all feel right now about chat GPT. Um, so if you wouldn't mind, just pop a word or two in the chat about how you're feeling right now about chat GPT. And if you haven't heard of it, that's okay, that's fine. Just pop a word or two in the chat. Nervous, wary, discouraged, AI is coming for us. Positive, new to, oh, these are coming so fast. First time hearing it, um, pretty useful, okay. Might take a few jobs, yeah, I hear a lot about that. Could be a tool, good tool, but could also be abused. Crazy, great. Could be a bad, good resource, frustrated that students might find it or students find it necessary. I asked ChatGPT this question and they answered it here. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, okay. Yeah, um, that's great. Continue to put those words in there if you want. Um, it's so funny because ChatGPT, um, a lot of people like myself and others have asked ChatGPT to kind of talk about itself. <laughs> um, and it's been interesting, some of the responses. So, um, all right. Yeah, those are some really interesting words. And definitely, um, I share some of that sentiment. So one of the reasons why I got so interested in ChatGPT 
um, is because I'm both fascinated and terrified by how intertwined digital technology has become with educational pedagogy and praxis. Um, last summer, I completed a graduate certificate in critical digital critical digital pedagogy and new, liter new literacies from UC Denver. And I learned a lot about what media literacy really is, the importance and relevance of digital storytelling, and how the critical pedagogy that I know is at the heart of most, if not all of the teaching that we do here at SFCC is influenced by digital tools and practices. So to use an understatement, ChatGPT um, definitely got my attention. So here's what I'll be covering in this session, um, you know, just kind of what the basics are of what chat GPT is and how it works, its strengths and weaknesses, and its potential implications for higher education. So I will be a bit of a talking head for, you know, about 15, 20 minutes, just to make sure we're all on the same page. But I do want to have plenty of time for open discussion um, about how we as a campus community might want to respond to it. So I'm sure we've all seen the headlines about ChatGPT. There has been no shortage of media coverage about it. That includes both mainstream um, as well as higher ed focused. Um, but the, the timing was a bit unfortunate for academe because it exploded on November 30th of last year, right when faculty everywhere were trying to wrap up the semester and get through final exams. So if you feel like you got caught by surprise, don't worry, you are not alone. But yeah, ChatGPT exploded on the scene, and it took literally only five days to amass one million users. There is, there's no other platform on the planet that could even touch those numbers in that short a period of time. So even as recently as a few days ago, there have been reports of the site generating a too many requests error um, just because they're so overwhelmed. So yeah, even now the platform is being mobbed with new users registering for it, as well as current users making a lot of um, requests. So um, I was gonna do some demos of it, but I got a little nervous about the availability of it. So I'm gonna be showing you some screenshots instead. So what exactly is ChatGPT? Okay, it's a large language model platform or LLM as it's typically typically called, um, that was launched last November by San Francisco-based open uh, company OpenAI. The GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Now that's awfully jargony, but basically what that means is ChatGPT was trained on an incredibly large data set of text. And so when someone gives it a prompt or asks it a question, it transforms the text that it's been pre-trained on into a very conversational, natural language sounding response. In other words, basically, it's a very sophisticated form of AI that can engage with the user in a variety of pretty novel ways, which again, I'll be showing. Now, AI certainly isn't new. I mean, our very own Workday, um, any website that has a chat feature, predictive text on our phones, autonomous vehicles, facial recognition. Those are all examples of fairly sophisticated AI that for better or worse, we're all pretty familiar with. But what makes chat GPT so unique is its ability to respond to user prompts in a very conversational tone. So what can chat GPT do? What is it supposedly good at? Um, and I'm going to focus more on academic, you know, higher ed related things, not so much like workplace productivity type things, although there can be a lot of overlap there. Um, it's definitely more than just a basic question and answer platform. I mean, it can certainly do that. But um, here's the thing. It can answer a question in a very specific way. So, for example, if I ask it to explain critical pedagogy and education, as you can see, it will do that. So I'll stay on here just for a second or two if anyone wants to finish reading this paragraph. But if I say, okay, explain it so a high school sophomore can understand it or explain it in simpler terms, it will do that. So these two screenshots are from the same session or conversation that I had with ChatGPT. 
So you can interact with ChatGPT and basically have it tweak the response it gives you until you're happy with it. Now, this is significant because it makes it easier for a user to have ChatGPT craft a response that might be, shall we say, more realistic in terms of their writing style or how they want it to sound. Um, another thing that it can do very easily is summarize. You can feed it up to, and I've heard, I've heard anywhere, I'm not exactly sure how many words you can feed it at a time. I've heard anywhere from like 500 to 2,000. Um, but you can feed it quite a bit of text and ask it to summarize that text. Again, you can specify it to summarize it in simpler terms or at a certain grade or lexile level. And as you can see here, I told it to keep it to 50 words. And so this, this is what it looks like. So here's its response. Um, it did pretty much what I asked. I, I think this is probably more than 50 words, but it's pretty close. So you can imagine, you know, if a, if a student were asked to simply summarize an article, that would be a very easy task for ChatGPT to perform. Uh, what else can it do? Outlines. Um, it can create an outline in proper outline format. Here I've asked it to provide an outline of a definition as well as the pros and cons of defunding the police. That was a topic that was explored by some of our English students in the last semester or two. Um, and I'm going to be honest, you know, based on what I've read about the topic, um, what we see here, again, I'll hang out on this pay, on this uh, slide for a few seconds so y'all can kind of take a look at that. Based on what I've read, um, this is actually, you know, very much in line with the, the information that I've come across. So just take a second or two to take a look at that. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Uh, coding and math. I, I don't know if we have any computer science or math folks in attendance, but ChatGPT was pretty notorious very early on for being able to generate content in various coding languages as, as well as look at a lot of code and tell the user exactly, oh, well, supposedly in theory, tell the user exactly what the problem is. I don't know enough about, you know, coding to know if the debugging advice that ChatGPT gives is good, if it's spot on, you know, how accurate it is. Um, I'll talk in just a, a minute or two about, you know, issues with misinformation um, and ChatGPT. But, you know, in theory, this is one of the things that it can do. Um, and so I think the last example that I'll show is this, um, where ChatGPT um, makes it, you know, what I would call, a, a, and again, all of these words are relative here. I'm just going to call this a respectable attempt at answering a, a somewhat nuanced question. So here I've asked it, asked it to explain the modern cultural impact of the Pueblo Revolt of 1680. Again, this is a, a question I've seen before, you know, that students might have to answer. I'll hang out here for a few seconds if you want to read ChatGPT's response. So some other kind of interesting and even fun uses of ChatGPT are recipes, okay? This is recipes sans the uh, very detailed family stories that you sometimes find when you do the same search on Google. I was, I was pretty impressed at, you know, how quickly it could give me a recipe. All I asked for was a re recipe and I got it. Uh, let's see, boilerplate emails, drafts of legal contracts. There's been a lot of talk about that recently. Marketing materials, language translation, and even poetry, as you can see on the left-hand side here. So these are just a few examples of what ChatGPT can do, um, and you know whether or not whether or not it does those things well. I think there's a lot of room for argument either way, and it also depends a great deal on how a prompt 
or question is worded, obviously the more detail that's provided in the prompt, the better and more specific the response will be, in theory at least. So I'll hang out here for a few seconds if you want to take a look at this. That was a good recipe, by the way. I made it. It was it was pretty good. And that's my cat, Carly. <laughs> okay, so what does chat GBT not do so well? What does it have issues with? What are some of its limitations? Well, first of all, just some nuts and bolts stuff, it doesn't have any knowledge past 2021. So it's not going to know about things like the current war in Ukraine, uh, the midterm elections, or, or anything to do with current events. It doesn't actively search the internet. So again, all of its knowledge is sort of you know, self-contained in the sense that it's drawing from these large data sets that it was originally trained on, not live information as it's produced and disseminated via the internet. Um, on a more serious note, um, it, it can and has provided incorrect information. Um, so what we have here is an excerpt from an article, and this is just one example. There are so many examples out there. This is an excerpt from an article published recently in the Schol Scholarly Kitchen, in which the author is trying to sort of tease out of chat GPT just where it got some statistics that it claimed were produced in a study from the American Association for the Advancement of Science about the link between social media and scientific citations that the author, who's, who's a subject matter um, expert in the area, absolutely could not find on their own. So I, I found this very interesting. Um, also, many argue that while chat GPT might not be overtly biased in its responses, that bias is naturally baked into the very fa fabric of how it constructs those responses, which, you know, to me kind of makes sense because the creation, the recording, the curation of knowledge has historically been very Western centric. So it's certainly fair to say that these large data sets that ChatGPT was trained on would very likely reflect those biases. Um, and finally, at least right now, um, it does not cite its sources for the information that it gives you. Um, so that may change in future iterations, but it's it's not going to give you, you know, the sources um, unless, you know, like you did, like that author did, you try and tease that information out. But there, you know, there have been some issues with that. So, um, but I, you know, probably future iterations of ChatGPT may provide like at the end, maybe some kind of references list or something like that. But right now it doesn't cite those sources. Okay, so what are the implications for higher education? Okay, we're not uh, dealing with Clippy here. This is definitely a little more advanced um, than Clippy. If we remember uh, Clippy, some of us of a certain age might remember Clippy from, uh, I guess it was the 90s or whenever it was. Um, definitely, you know, I think one of the first things that comes to mind is academic integrity. Um, obviously, ChatGPT poses um, just unprecedented opportunities for students to <clears throat> get a little help um, with their schoolwork. So what kinds of policy changes might be needed, um, what, what policy changes might need to take place? Would these policy changes be at the individual instructor level, the departmental level, the institutional level? I mean, it's entirely conceivable that some faculty, because I, I have seen these conversations in one of the Facebook groups that I'm on, some faculty might decide, yeah, you know, we're going to, I'm going to integrate sanctioned, okay use of ChatGPT for certain assignments, while others might not. Um, assessment. So how can we effectively assess student learning if students are using chat GPT, whether it's sanctioned or not? Now, keep in mind, this wouldn't necessarily be limited to writing. I mean, you know, chat GPT can solve math problems step by step. It'll actually show you the step by step solutions if you specify, if you ask it to do so, of certain math problems. Um, it can write computer code, as we saw earlier. It can analyze data and write reports, you can put in text and tell it, create a table for this, and it will create a table. 
So it can affect assessment that goes on across a wide variety of disciplines, not just writing. Um, teaching pedagogy and praxis. Um, I've heard many liken the impact of chat GPT to that of the calculator. So using a calculator in the classroom or you know, even in one's daily life was kind of a huge deal in the 70s and 80s. And yet no one today would look down their nose at someone using their phone to you know, calculate a restaurant tip. And I've also heard comparisons to Wikipedia. Mike Caulfield, um, a digital literacy expert at the University of Washington, he is a huge proponent um, of using Wikipedia responsibly to quickly learn about controversial people and organizations. So, you know, it kind of begs the question, we have to ask ourselves, should we at least hold the possibility that ChatGPT and its future iterations might soon play a similar role? And if so, how will that impact what we do in our curriculum development and lesson planning? So how has higher ed been responding um, to to chat, chat GPT, how have they been responding to all of this? Obviously, it's still pretty early in the game, um, but a number of colleges and universities have indeed been communicating their responses. On a broad level, um, they've been doing what we're doing now. They're having campus conversations. Um, I've been seeing a lot of, um, you know, different colleges and universities call this, you know, different um, the centers for teaching excellence, centers for teaching and learning. I've seen a lot of those web pages that are making their faculty aware of ChatGPT, providing resources so, for support. Um, and those resources are Resources are things like links to articles, sample revised syllabi and assignments that, you know, acknowledge and, you know, try to account for chat GPT, sample policies, things like that. And by the way, we, um, if Val hasn't already dropped it in the chat, there is a link. I created a libguide that's got a, a ton of all of these things that I've mentioned. So there is a, um, there's going to be a link um, to that in the chat. So all of these articles that I'm talking about, videos, podcasts, things like that, how other colleges are, are reacting, um, sample policies, sample assignments, things like that. There are plenty of links in the uh, LibGuide that I created. So we'll be sure to drop that in there. Uh, on a more granular level, um, faculty uh, have are being advised by their administrations to revise their course design, particularly for the online environment. So many faculty are including statements in their syllabi that clearly state what they will and will not allow with regards to using ChatGPT. Um, many faculty are revising their assignments as well as writing in discussion prompts to, um, you know, try and um, elicit a deeper, more critical and reflective response from students, one that can't, you know, quite as easily be tackled by ChatGPT. I've also heard many educators say they're actually going to positively integrate use of ChatGPT in their assignments in pretty creative and thought-provoking ways. Um, some of them are having students say, go ahead and let ChatGPT write this particular paragraph of your argumentative essay, but then you're going to fact check it, or you're going to give your, you know, based on what you've learned on this topic, you're going to talk about what you think of that. Um, I've heard of instructors saying, hey, you know, our students are going to use, you know, they're using Word or Office 365, and they're going to have to use track changes so I can actually see, you know, sort of the writing process take place. Um, so those kinds of conversations um, are, are taking place. Educators are definitely taking a variety of approaches. Now, there are some detectors out there that you know supposedly can detect if chat if um text was written by a uh, chat gpt so if that's a route you know you think you'd like to take those are out there they're they're in development um again there are links to all of those in the libguide probably the most notable that's gotten so much press coverage is gpt0 um it's gotten a lot of press coverage because it was developed literally by a college student someone named edward tian from princeton university uh, from what I understand, I believe Turnitin is supposedly developing a chat GPT detector. So I think we're going to see a lot more of these in the future. And I, I presume, I hope that they will continue to evolve. Um, but right now, the jury is still out on the efficacy of these sites because they aren't 100% foolproof. Um, and see, here's the thing. The, the real problem is chat GPT does indeed crank out 
quote unquote, original writing, original in the sense that it's not just, you know, copying and pasting content, it's actually generating new writing. So <laughs> the thing is, traditional plagiarism checkers, they might not necessarily be able to flag its content. Um, and, you know, to be honest, and I played around with chat GPT a lot, and I've seen, you know, a lot of other, um, you know, uh, people who teach writing, they've played around with it a lot. Frankly, all it takes is a little bit of tweaking and wordsmithing to alter chat GPT's output just enough to evade detection by these current GPT detectors. So it's, I mean, I've heard people compare it, you know, oh, the, you know, this is just another arms race in academe that we can't win. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely kind of frustrating. So, but these tools are in development. So they're out there if you want to avail yourself of them. Um, and another potential problem with using these detectors is ethics. Now, I don't know a lot about this, but I have seen a lot of talk again on, you know, one of these Facebook groups that I'm on, um, that there could be ethical issues with uploading student work to these detectors. Would we need to get their permission? Um, and how biased are the detectors? Could students who honestly make true strides in their writing be, you know, sort of inadvertently penalized by such detectors? Could students who write well, again, this is on a spectrum, um, could students who write well, but just not in the style of writing that chat GPT or its detectors are familiar with be unfairly penalized? So these are considerations we need to keep in mind. Um, and that's, oh, I think I got through... Yeah, I got through a few minutes earlier than I than I thought. I really wanted to leave the vast majority, you know, or or you know, at least fifty percent of this. Um, I think we're right on one thirty, so I wanted to leave a lot of time open for open discussion. Um, so these are my sort of burning questions. I'm going to go through the chat a little bit. I guess Val has been looking at some of them. So um, you know, like I said, these are kind of my burning questions. Um, but 